So then we go from Red Man and Macho Man to Maya. So with with uh, getting with Maya, uh, because people like Jill Scott and and uh, A Marie and other people had done actually R and B singers doing go go songs, the Maya one was it had elements, but it wasn't like like a Jill Scott or A Marie where the percussion was so dominant and prominent. So what what made the Maya song uh, AO such a good fit for you? Um, well, first of all, uh, her father introduced me to her. Her father used to perform at a club that I, that I used to rock here back in the day called The Classic. And her father, uh, his name is Haji. And he had a group called Haji and Friends. And they did a lot of top 40 jazz, R&B type thing. You know what I mean? So to make a long story short, she was like, man, my daughter, she sings, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I met Maya when she was a teenager when I first met her. And so by the time she approached me with the project, she was now an established artist. You know what I mean? And uh, she said, I got this record that I just, I I really want to hear your voice on. Uh, She has an amazing home studio. She brought me over there and we did the record. And once again, she's like, I just want you to be DJ Cool on this. And so she wanted the hype man thing and this and that. And um, the record didn't do what it should have done. I think it's because she was going through something with her label at the time. Here we go again with the same <laughs> little going through the label thing uh, story. Um, and so that didn't really come off the way that she wanted it to come off. It was a good record wasn't a go-go record. It was definitely an R&B kind of hip-hop record, but it felt like a go-go record, probably because of the tempo and the bounce that it had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I was always intrigued because it had a very different uh, sonic feel to it than a, mm-hmm. <clears throat> not only than a lot of her stuff, but even your stuff. So I was just always intrigued at the genesis of it because it was very uh, atypical sonically. Um, Mm -hmm. now one of my other songs that's one of my favorites that you ever did was Block Party with Chuck Brown of course so Uh, now I had I had the pleasure of meeting and interviewing and hanging out with Chuck several times over the years and through Tom Gofogel as well he had uh, told me about the album and Chucky Thompson and everything and so I heard a lot of the album before it came out Mm-hmm. And I and the main two I liked was Chuck Baby and Block Party. So, yeah. so with Block Party, and you guys did a great video for that and everything. But the thing that always amazed me, and I've talked to Dougie Fresh and a few other people about this, is that whether people know it or not, Chuck was in his sixties or however old he was at the time, but yeah. still, still killing it like on that level. So for you as somebody that admired him, collaborated with him, performed with him, all these different things. By the time you're doing Block Party, did you ever, like, when you were looking at him, like, wait a minute, this dude is still, like, killing the game, and he's, you know, a senior citizen. Like, how how did that, what was that realization like for you? You know what, to be honest with you, man, I never thought of it like that. It's like, I don't know. Myself and probably a lot of people around here just thought that Chuck was never going to pass away. We thought he was going to be here forever. It just it felt like he was already here forever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. um, you don't you don't think about that. You just think about the fact that I'm about to do this record with Chuck, and this joint is going to be hot. And the other Chuck, Chucky e. <laughs> Thompson, produced it, and um. It was just, it was incredible that I was actually be a part of that, of that project. You know what I mean? And I miss Chucky Thompson so much. He's such a good friend, such a talented person. Uh, uh, another little fun fact, uh, Chucky Thompson played the bass line on Cha Cha Cha. There is a bass line on that record, but I mixed it down so low. That I didn't want people to hear it. I wanted people to feel it. You know what I mean? To kind of give it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Um... So getting an opportunity to work with Chucky and Chuck was just incredible for me. I I, I didn't think about it. I just did it. Hmm. Well, it's funny you say that about uh, 
on Cha 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 with the mixing because when you listen to Block Party in particular with the guitar on there, the, the thing that's interesting I wanted to get your insight on as a DJ and as somebody that ha uses headphones or has used headphones so much over his career, I think we've also lost because of the one little ones we stick in our ears, we've lost the bottom and we lost some of the feel of instruments. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, what do you think that reality, how has that affected the way people consume, digest and appreciate and enjoy music? That's an interesting question. Um, maybe because, and not all the way across the board, but it seems like a lot of the more popular music has, at least in my opinion, anyway, has gotten away from using actual musicians or, you know, like using or incorporating uh, live instrumentation as opposed to, excuse me, samples. You know what I mean? Um, and at the end of the day, man, like samples are cool. I mean, you know, hey, <laughs> I'm the king of the samples or one of them. But anyway, um, you can't beat live instrumentation. You just can't. Right. You know what I mean? I was watching this producer. This dude is incredible. What is his name? Count something. He's on Instagram. Count. This dude is incredible. Um, white guy. Seems like he could play every instrument imaginable. Like this dude was just playing everything. Like what the hell? But some of the stuff that he's putting together is nuts. Count something. I think I've seen him on TikTok. Hmm. Okay. But he is incredible. This dude plays all these instruments one at a time, and he's just stacking everything up, and he's mixing everything. And he's, I think I think one of his biggest influences as a producer is Jay Dilla, because a lot of his stuff feels kind of Jay Dilla. Like, you know what I mean? This dude is dope. Count something. Count spelled with a K, not with a C. Okay. I'm going to look at This dude is incredible. But once again, all live instrumentation. You know what I mean? And um, you just can't beat that because it's coming from humans. You know what I mean? And so it's not going to be so, you know, it's, the live thing is is it, it, it's going to have feeling. You know what I'm saying? And emotion and all that other kind of stuff. As opposed to sometimes samples, if you don't know how to use them, samples can sound very stiff. You know what I mean? Yeah, very rigid. You know. Sometimes you lose something with that precision. You lose you know, some like of the... Some people... Some people just don't know how to chop samples and put them together. So shout out to people like Ninth Wonder, Just Blaze, uh, Premier, a lot of these cats, uh, 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 Pete Rock. You know, these dudes, just incredible at chopping up Dilla, obviously. You know what I mean? People like that that can really chop up samples and really make them feel like, you know, they were done using uh, live instrumentation or live musicians. Yeah. Well... That's what made uh, uh, Turn It Up with Rare Essence a few years ago for me. So, well, several years ago now, but more recently. Uh, so exciting to hear you with Rare Essence again after so many years. And then you guys did a video for the song. Um, so what was the special synergy and energy working with them from the 80s, then all the way up to like 2016-ish? I'm a fan. I well, I love all of these groups. For the most part, I'm not so much into the bounce beat thing. I can only take bits and pieces of that because that's not my era. You know what I mean? Uh, some of it I appreciate though, but I, but for the most part, I'm just I've always been a big fan of Red Essence. Like Red Essence just always had that little thing with them. You know, shout out to James Funk, rest in peace to Foot, and all the members of Red Essence that have passed away. Um. And shout out to the current squad, you know what I mean? To to the head coach, Andre Whiteboy Johnson, and the current, you know, a, a lot of rare essence. They, they, I don't know, man. These cats, they just seem to be transcending time. Because just like you said, they, they've been in it since like late 70s, for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, uh, rare essence is just incredible. They incorporated hip hop, so you can thank Donnell Floyd for that. As far as, you know, uh, incorporating like samples and when I playing live in Go Go, mm. yeah, that's Donnell Floyd right there. Donnell Floyd, D Floyd, as we call him, you know what I'm saying? Big hip hop guy for real. I think if he was 
out of New York instead of DC, he would have been one of our great MCs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I remember uh, back to uh, Give Me the Beat, the best of DC Go Go Volume 2, some of the songs on there, like, you know, when you hear Uh Oh and they're sampling Onyx, or you hear yep. the, Bud, the Huckabucks with the Bud and they're sampling the Budweiser commercial. It's like, that's just crazy. <laughs> that's D Floor right there. He's a hip hop dude at his core, for real, for real. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Well, now, um, what, since you're doing so many shows and everything, and you always have, how, and, and people that follow you on Instagram, if they don't, they should, but for those that do follow you, you still are doing, you know, shows all around the country, but how, for you, were you affected by COVID and the pandemic and all the shutdown? How did you find you had to evolve your business? Uh, well, shout out to Nico Hobson um, from GoGo Radio Live, which is now GoGo TV. Uh, I was approached by them to uh, to do a, a weekly broadcast, uh, which is uh, shown through Facebook. And uh, I call it DJ Cool's Monday Night Live, where I play nothing but 80s and 90s go-go, and, and I'm coming off the same way I used to come off in the club and whatnot. And uh, so I was able to kind of keep the ball rolling with that. You know what I mean? As far as kind of keeping my chops up and stuff like that is concerned, until we kind of got to the point to where we could kind of start, you know, getting back out there slowly but surely. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I still see, you, still see you getting in, uh, doing stuff all the way from Dallas, North Carolina, all over the place, and you just oh, did yeah. the the, uh, the Legends of Hip Hop tour that was in the area, and also uh, with my good friend Dana Dane and some of, yeah. some of the other icons of the game. So yeah, mm -hmm. and then what what are you working on now that people should be looking out for? Um, well. Obviously, cha cha cha. We're gonna keep on pushing on that till this summer. Um, I shouldn't. Well, I am working on a remix for cha cha cha. It's going to be very interesting. Um, and uh, so I, I think that's the thing that's kind of like on on top of everything else right now. Just kind of finishing the remix for cha cha cha, and and maybe even shooting a new video for cha cha cha. Um, I'm, I'm looking to work with Cupid from Cupid Shuffle and uh, uh, Big Moochie from the song called Biker Shuffle, who are probably two of the top guys in the game as far as line dance music is concerned. So when they heard the original version of Cha 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 back in, actually back in 90, when we were originally supposed to release it, man, I love that record, man. If you do a remix, I want to be on it. I was like, okay, let me put that in my pocket, save it for when I need it. So then I was like, all right, um, this record is starting to slowly but surely, you know, gain some legs. And when I shout out to Donnie Simpson and DJ Dirty Rico for Magic 102.3 because um, Rico was the one that introduced the record to Donnie. Donnie grabbed the record and now he's playing it like crazy. And I love him and highly appreciate him for the work that he's doing, like getting that record going and whatnot. You know, I mean, it's. It's Donnie Simpson, you know what I'm saying? If he calls you and say your record is crazy and I'm going to burn it up, then you let him do that. You know what I mean? Because it's Donnie, you know what I'm saying? So um, I said we're going to work this original version to around this summer, and then we'll drop the remix on him this summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Well, man, DJ Cool, it's been an honor and a privilege. Anything else uh, you want to add before we, before we bounce? Shout out. For one of my other brothers, Fat Man Scoop, for the record we did when I flipped a uh, Rob Bass record, It Takes Two. Yes. And that wound up um, being a, um, a, what was it, 100 year anniversary NFL commercial song for that, which was incredible. I was like, what? And they say that that commercial was the biggest commercial for the Super Bowl in the history of the Super Bowl. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I don't know if you've seen that commercial. Where they got all the legend. You can look it up on YouTube now. The commercial is incredible. Yeah. Now I remember I remember seeing it, but I for the actual record, It Takes Two is actually my favorite song ever. But I that was during the era where there were a lot of songs I couldn't tell if you really did them or if it was just DJs taking them. Later no, since that. you were in the video. 
Okay. Now, me and Scoop did that. That was the first record that I did with him. Um, Let me think. Yeah, that was the first record me and him done together live like that. Uh, the stuff that he was doing with Crooklyn Clan was what you call studio live when he did Be Faithful and stuff like that. Right. I gave him the opportunity to do a live, live record. We did that in Tampa, Florida. Down at BET Studios. See, like I said, you're always recording away from the house for the lives. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there it is, man. Well, <clears throat> thank you again for coming through, DJ Cool. It's an honor, man. Uh, very excited to talk to you again. It's been too long, and uh, we'll, we'll have you come back once we run through these. We'll, we'll have you come back. Yes, indeed. I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, no, no problem. And, and, and once again, real quick, I want everybody to know, um, anybody that's on Facebook, I want you to download the GoGo Radio Live app. Look for GoGo TV. And I come on every Monday. It's, uh, my, pro my broadcast is called DJ Cool Monday Night Live Broadcast. I play nothing but 80 and 90s go go. So you hear a lot of PA type stuff. You're not going to hear stuff like doing the button, you know, all this commercial stuff because the reason why is because Facebook will hit me, you know, cut my broadcast off for a lot of those songs. So for the most part, you hear a lot of stuff that is like you had to be there to hear this. You know what I mean? You had to be at Anacostia Park in 1982 to hear this EU joint that I'm playing on. You had to be at, uh, I don't know, the Maverick Boom in 1987 to hit his racist joint that I'm playing, something like that. So I'm playing a lot of PA tape stuff, and uh, it's an incredible broadcast. Every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. on Facebook and Twitch, DJ Cool's Monday Night Live, all right? In the beginning, hip-hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangster rap. Hip-hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. And then changed the world again. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.